right, so <laughs> we will continue to do the second order. Linear constant coefficient Constant coefficient is one word. Second order linear constant coefficient homogeneous differential equations. Okay. So let's try to solve one of those. And uh, today I want to show you a method that actually where you actually do the solving. You actually solve, not, not guess. Okay. And this is just demonstration that it can be done. It's just not pleasant, and you probably don't want to do it this way. So, I mean, uh, if, you, if you don't want to take notes for this section, that's fine. Just, just sit back and relax and see how it works, OK? All right. So uh, let's say we have. The following differential equation, y double prime minus 3y prime minus 4y equals to 0. And my intention is to actually solve it, not, not make guesses and see that it's a solution. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, although it can be done without the help of this extra notation I'm using, but uh, this notation I'm, I'm showing you is quite helpful. So I'm going to use uh, an operation operator notation for this differential equation, which is you set d as d dx. So in other words, d is the operator that differentiates a function. So for example, y double prime, uh, y prime, is you take y and you're differentiating one, right? So you, instead of y prime, you write down y dy, okay? And then instead of y double prime, you can write down d squared y because you're taking y and you're differentiating it twice, okay? So you can do that. And using that, you can rewrite uh, this thing as d squared y minus 3y. Uh, 3dy and uh, minus 4y equal to 0. Okay. Not only that, you can rewrite this in a factored form. Okay. So you can rewrite this in a factored <coughs> form. So, see, uh, although this was really the really taking y and differentiating it once, we can rewrite this as d squared minus 3d minus 4 applied to y equal to 0. And uh, this actually requires some interpretation. What does this really mean? It means that if you're given a function, uh, this, this entire thing is an operator which does the following. It takes second derivative of this given function once, and then it takes the first derivative and multiplies by negative 3, and it takes that function and multiplies by negative 4, and you add them together. So this, this thing, if you take this interpretation, uh, this, this thing is really equivalent to what I wrote over there. Okay? Although, uh, I mean, if you see it this way, it looks like I, I factored as if I'm treating this as a polynomial, but uh, it really, uh, really should be interpreted the way that I just interpreted. Okay, uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, you can you can even go further and decide to factor this. It's kind of becomes somewhat amusing. You start questioning, is this really an operator? Is this 
just some kind of a, a polynomial in disguise, but really, uh, <coughs> you can rewrite this in this form. Rewriting that form. Now let's see how this could make sense. This one means you apply to a function this operator, and then after you do that op operation, you do this, you apply this operator. And here's how you understand it. First, one is multiplied to y, and then you take y and differentiate, you add the two. So this thing inside will be y prime plus y, right? And to that, you're gonna apply d minus four, which is, uh, uh, let's actually see. Uh, let, let me convince you that, that what I wrote here is indeed same as that, okay? Uh, then then uh, all's good, right? So let's try this. What is d plus one y? So d applied to y is y prime, one times y is y, so y prime plus y. That's one, what d plus one is, okay? All right. Now then, uh, what is d minus four applied to this y prime plus y. See, th this is being applied to that. Okay, so let's see what it, it gives us. D applied to each individual one is you, you, means you have to differentiate, so it's y double prime plus y prime. And then you multiply negative four, negative four, and then you get negative four y prime minus four y, right? I honestly, all I did was this foiling. Uh, but the only difference in regular foiling and this is that d actually means you have to differentiate. It's, it's this operator. So if you apply the d, then uh, you actually have to differentiate. And then since these are two alike terms, I can combine them. And I get y double prime uh, minus 3y prime minus 4y, right? Which is exactly the same as what we had before, OK? So you're convinced that uh, you are actually allowed to factor uh, an operator like this. Actually, I'm not really telling you the full story because uh, uh, what I did over here is only possible because there is no x's in here, OK? Uh, I mean, you can certainly have operators like, instead of 3, you could have something like 3xd. In that case, you can still apply to functions. The only problem is that if you had those x's in there, then you can't, you can't factor it like this anymore. It becomes very complicated. But for at least, at least for these constant coefficient ones, you can factor it as if they were polynomials. And if you do the computation, you can see that it's equivalent to uh, the our original form. Okay? So uh, to recap what we did so far, let's summarize what we did so far. We didn't, we didn't do any computation yet. I, I just want to introduce to you this new notation. And uh, using this new notation, I want to rewrite it. And, and you'll see that uh, it will actually allow us to solve it rather than uh, making guesses and, and uh, writing down the solutions. OK. So here. First, we change this into d squared y minus 3dy minus 4y equal to 0 because d means differentiate. It's the operator that differentiates whatever that follows. And you use d squared because you're differentiating it twice. And then you factor it as if they were polynomials. So factor out the y, and then you can even factor this one and say d minus 4, d plus 1, times y equal to 0. You even say this, OK? And then. Uh, we got a little suspicious, and we actually multiplied these out and found that it, this is indeed the same as that, OK? All right. So we put it in this, to this, this other form. How does that help us? Well, here's how it's going to help us. We are going to say this much, which is really y prime plus y, right? We're going to say this y prime plus y is z. And we, we want to solve that equation. And, uh, we want to solve the equation for z. Okay? So we are going to introduce this temporary function zx. And let's say, let's see how that works. So 
we want to say z is equal to d plus 1 times y. That's this part, right? Which is another way of saying z is uh, y prime plus y. And then uh, this equation, since it's this one and this much is z, it turns into uh, d minus 4 z equal to 0. Okay, so uh, you can say that you have a system of differential equations. All right? So it's like uh, z prime minus 4z is equal to 0, and z is equal to y prime plus y. So it's like a system of equations, but because it contains differ uh, differentiation, it's a system of differential equations, which, by the way, we will also learn how to solve later in this semester. Okay? It's going to be fun. Okay? All right. So now let's actually try to solve this. What is this again? This is uh, when d is applied to z, that's z prime minus 4z equal to 0. What's the solution? It, isn't this a, a first order linear? Right? Anyone? First order linear? Is that good? <coughs> so you multiply. Uh, so that's your p. So multiplier is e to the integral of negative 4 dx. So it's uh, e to the negative 4x. I multiply that to this equation, I get e to the negative 4x z prime minus 4 times e to the negative 4x z equal to 0. Uh, you got 0 because 0 times anything is 0. Now, we know that the left side turns into e to the negative 4x times z prime equal to 0. Uh, so. Uh, See, z is a function of x. This is also a function of x. So if you actually had to do this derivative, you have to use the product rule. If you apply the product rule to this, you'll see that when z is differentiated, it's going to create this term. When this one is differentiated, it's going to create this term. So in fact, this left side is equal to having this and differentiating once. Okay? Now, once you turn that into a single derivative, then it's all easy to integrate. right? So you just integrate both sides by dx. Let's see what does that give us. <coughs> Differentiating and integration, they cancel each other. So on the left side, you're going to use the negative 4x times z. On the right side, you, if, what do you get if you integrate 0? 0. You get c, right? And then you, you multiply each of the 4x both sides. You get z equals to c times e to the 4x. Okay. Because this is z over e to the 4x, so if you multiply the e to the 4x to the other side, we get, yes? Would it work out the same way if you uh, put d minus 4 times y uh, equals z? z minus 4 times? D, d minus 4. You, ch you chose d plus 1 times y mm -hmm. to become y prime plus y equals z. Okay. Had you done d minus 4 times y equals z, would you get the same answer? Uh, I mean, what you can do is you can switch these two around be, and then define z as d minus 4 times y equal to z and uh, say z d plus 1 times z equal to 0 and you solve it, you're, you're going to get another value for z but at the end of the day you're going to get the same answer. So uh, his question was what if your factoring was the opposite? What if it was d plus 1 times d minus 4? And it's, it, it, it means when you're solving it, it might look different here, but at the end of the day, you're going to get the same answer. Okay. So uh, for, for now, we temporarily found out that z is equal to c times e to the 4, 4x. But if you go back and see what the question was, the question was about y. And this is about z. So we haven't solved it yet. We, we need to find out what, what y is. So what do we do? How do we find find uh, how do we find uh, y? You put this back in here, right? In the first equation, and then you solve for y, and you're done. So let's do that. We are going to go back. We're going to go back and replace z by what we just found out. Z is e to the four x equals to, I said this is y prime plus y, right? So that's, that's what uh, 
what you get as an equation for y. And again, you have a first order linear. Uh, and uh, if I rewrite this, if I put this over to the other side, then you say that px is 1. So your multiplier is e to the integral of 1 dx, which is e to the x. And that's why you have to multiply both sides. Now, if you multiply e to the x both sides, you get e to the x times y prime plus e to the x times y equals to c times e to the 5x, because e to the x times e to the 4x, the exponents add up, so you get e to the 5x. And once again, you can check that the left side turns into a product rule, which is always the case when you invoke this, this multiplier. The sole purpose of the multiplier is so that one of the side will turn into the product rule. And over here, you get c times e to the 5x, and then you integrate both sides. Okay, and then this one, derivative and dx cancels, and you get e to the x y equals to, uh, if you integrate e to the 5x, is one fifth of c e to the 5x, and then plus uh, another constant, right? So let's just call this other constant as uh, c2. And we are almost there. We just have to now solve this for y. And let's see, y is, if I divide by e to the x, I get 1 fifth c e to the 4x plus c2 e to the negative x, because if you divide by e to the x, that's the same as e to the negative x. And then uh, I will just call this first one as c1. I'm just going to call this as c1. So y is equal to c1 e to the 4x. And that's your final answer. Okay, so that's how you would actually solve a, a second order differential equation without having to think about linear independence of uh, functions. Uh, uh, we don't have to think about uh, what uh, Blonskians. Uh, you don't have to make guesses, educated guesses. You just <coughs> straight up solve from beginning to the end uh, by using. I mean, we could we could also have gotten this result without using the d, but it will be extremely hard to think. So at least the D somehow sweetened the calculation. And after some long calculation, we got this. But you'll see that making guesses is a lot faster rather than uh, trying to do this.